I want to share with you a brand new workflow to improve ChatGPT's writing style a whole lot. And this is going to use the brand new option inside of ChatGPT, the memory option. So you only have to do this once. This is a simple workflow. It's going to use three different prompts across three different steps. It's going to take less than 10 minutes. And once you do this, your ChatGPT account will have this memory. So every time you start a new conversation, every time you give it a new prompt, you do not have to do this and go through the prompting again. It's a one-time thing thanks to this memory option. And if you use ChatGPT to write anything for you, this is going to vastly improve it. And that's email copy, blog, script, really anything that ChatGPT is writing for you. Now, once you set this up in its memory, you'll see a vast improvement. So the very first step of this process is to get ChatGPT to analyze a writing style. This could be something that you wrote. So that's what I'm going to do to mimic my own writing style. But you could also do this with other people's writing style if you want to mimic their tone, their voice and the writing style too. And the prompt is a little bit involved here because we wanted to analyze the different portions of it. We're not just going to say analyze this writing style because we want to specifically tell it what part and what different things about the writing style we want to mimic. So I have this prompt here and I'll include a resource at the end. You could get all these prompts. But basically, we are going to have ChatGPT analyze the provided text and it's going to analyze it in many, many different things. It's going to analyze it for its tone and voice. It's going to analyze it for a sentence structure. It's going to analyze the vocabulary usage to figure out how complicated or simple the vocabulary is. Again, because we're giving it a sample, it will actually go and take a look and figure that out. And there are a few other things here that really take it to the next level. But it's, I think, six or seven different things that I added to it. And then it says, once you complete your analysis, give a full breakdown in bullet point format. And then this is where you would insert the text here at the end. So right now, we just wanted to give us a bullet point format so we could then take a look before we ask it to actually commit this to memory, which I'll show you how that works in a second. And here I'm going to use the transcript from my own video. Every YouTube video has this by default. So if you haven't seen that, if you go to any YouTube video, this is the one I just made about ChatGPT memory. If you want to watch this, it's a more deep dive into what memory is and how it works. But if you click on the description of any YouTube video and you come down here and click on show transcript, it puts the transcript over here. So then if you click right here and hide the timestamps, you could then take the entire transcript, just go ahead and go all the way down. This is, I think, a 12 minute video, so it's pretty long. But ChatGPT is going to be able to use this and then go back to ChatGPT and paste it. So this is going to be quite a bit of a long prompt, right? So we had a long prompt to start and then we're pasting 12 minutes worth of a transcript. And I should mention this, this right now, at some point, they're testing this with free accounts too. But right now I'm using GPT plus GPT plus members have this memory option. If you do this right now, this first step does work with the free account too. But for us to commit it to memory right now, it's available to GPT plus users. And as I'm recording, this is not yet available to any accounts in Europe. They're testing this only with all plus users in the US and some free accounts too. I'll show you where to check that in a second if you have it or not. But if I send out this prompt in step one, this is the response that it's going to give me in this format. So I'm going to know the tone and the voice. So the tone is informal and informative. This is how I typically talk. So I like to keep all my writing the same conversational and friendly aims to educate the readers in a casual and approachable way. Right. My own writing style. Again, you could do this with any transcript, any blog, anything on the Internet, basically, as long as it's a substantial amount of text. So it has a good amount to grasp and analyze examining sentence structure or vocab or this one figuring out if I use things like analogies and things like that the pacing and rhythm it understands the flow of text and then it summarized that style okay so if I like this I could go ahead and use the following prompt if I want to omit something and not use part of it I would just have to copy and paste the parts that I do want to keep and then use this prompt. I'm going to say commit this to memory. From this point forward, you would always write based on this stored memory. So it's going to store all those different things. Now, I'm going to show you where to find out if you have this option and how to actually activate or deactivate it. But you should see something if you have it that says memory updated. And if you hover over it, it's actually showing you what's happening over here. Now, if I want to edit this memory, I could hover and edit the memory. But before I do that, 
I'll go over here to my settings menu. I'll go right here to settings. And over here, there's a tab called personalization. If you are missing this tab altogether, you don't have memory. So it is at a limited release. Hopefully by the time you watch this, if you watch this later, everyone's gonna have it. But right now, we only have this in certain accounts. But by default, it should be turned to green and it's on. So you don't actually have to come here. That's why I didn't show you the settings because you don't have to turn it on. As long as you have it, it's on by default. Everything I'll show you up to that point will work the same. Okay, if you want to manage your memory, you could always press manage and all the memories I've stored so far appear here. And if I want to delete any of them, I could just delete them here and it will forget that memory. And in new responses, it won't pull that into our conversation. In this case, we obviously just gave it this memory. So we do not want to change that. But this is a really nice way for us to be able to update it in real time. So we're not stuck with this memory permanently. We could actually control it. Now, this first step is very useful and it's a huge step and it's going to improve vastly how ChatGPT is going to respond to you. But we still have a couple more steps. Step two is we're going to ban ChatGPT from using very specific words. And in a previous video, I mentioned the word delve. I taught you how to actually get ChatGPT to forget that word and not use it in any responses that it gives you. Delve is the most overused word in ChatGPT, but it's not the only one. So here's our next prompt. Every time you respond to any prompt, avoid using the following words or phrases and keep the language simple and direct. So I'm kind of giving it a little bit extra here, but it's not just words. Sometimes you use this phrases pretty frequently too. So as an AI language model, Delve, Realm, Unleash, tapestry, sell into the future. And again, you could take these and you could actually take any of them out that you don't like. Again, this will be in the resource that I'll share with you for downloading. But if you want to remove any of them, just delete it. If you want to add your own, just add it. But th that will become your prompt. Customize it the way you like. And then at the very end of that, you want to type in commit this to memory. So just in this one prompt, it will do everything you need to. And there we go. It's updating the memory with these words. You could always go back and add to it, delete that memory and add a new prompt just like this with more words. Analyze, ask ChatGPT to write a blog post for you without giving it any context and just go through it and see which words you would never use yourself. We already taught it our writing style or whoever's writing style that you took. So it's going to already be limited. But these words are still going to pop up no matter what you do, unless you do this prompt right here as the second step to improve the writing style. Now, that brings us to step number three, which usually we want to control the length of the response ChatGPT gives us. Most of us typically want something on the shorter side or on the medium side. We don't usually need a thousand words unless we're writing a blog or a script or something like that. So that depends from use case to use case. So I have a prompt that actually doesn't limit it. So it still could answer you in one sentence or in a thousand words. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a shortcut. So then I could decide how I want it to answer me. This is the prompt. Every time I type in short and you want to put this in some kind of a special kind of bracket, you could put parentheses, you could put question marks, you could put colons. Just something because if I don't have these brackets around it, every time I type the word short, it's also going to trigger this. We don't want that. We want this to almost be like a hotkey or a shortcut. It could be a key on your keyboard that you never use or a special character, whatever you want this to be. But in this case, I like to format it kind of like this. Every time I type in short in these brackets, provide the answer in two sentences, ideal for quick facts and direct answers. Every time I type in medium, give me a answer that is a paragraph or two. And every time I type in long, again, in these brackets, give me detailed explanation and comprehensive insight suitable for in-depth analysis. And then at the end, I always say commit this to memory. So let's go ahead and send this out. And now that the memory has been updated, this is how simple it is to use this kind of prompt, right? So if you want a short, very brief answer, it's always going to know to do that now because this always has it in any chat inside of any memory. In fact, let me go to a brand new chat just to show you this doesn't have to happen in the same chat. It will always be there on your account. So if I type in short and explain digital marketing, this is always going to be one or two sentences on the short side. But if I type in medium and explain digital marketing, same exact prompt, right? it's going to actually be able to go a paragraph or sometimes two paragraphs. That's based on the prompt that I had based on medium writing. 
Now, if I say long, it's going to be able to give me a much longer response, right? So you got your short, you got your medium, and you got your long, and it looks like it's going to keep writing this one. You could limit this. You could get those keywords long to be more specific. You could give it feedback, like make this SEO friendly, make the headline bold, all kinds of different things that you could give it when you train it based on that memory. And every time you type in long, it's going to know that. Now, you could build custom GPTs to do all these same things too. So I have custom GPTs that basically go through these same three steps minus the memory part. And I really fine tune those as well, kind of got them to do exactly what I want for different use cases. I have a different custom GPT video too on this channel. And this resource guide, this workflow here with all the prompts, I'll include that as a download that you could get for free. And I'll send you other resources too if you're a part of our email list. We have a free email list where we send out free different downloads and newsletters as well that you could obviously unsubscribe to at any time. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.